Hello and welcome. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how I install the vinyl flooring. And these are the tools that I used. So nothing fancy, no power tools. And on the right, you even see I used the metal snips. That's the installation instructions from the manufacturer because you're about to see me install the flooring and I'm not going to have any underlayment underneath it. And I wanted to show you that. So the manufacturer, you see how floppy that is? I love that flooring. Um, the manufacturer suggests if the floor is even and clean, you actually don't have to do underlayment. And the reason why people do put underlayment under the floor is one is for noise, so your floor is a little bit more quiet, especially with laminate flooring, is that they tend to get noisy. And then the other thing is if you have a floor that it has imperfections in it, that laminate will kind of fill in the grooves and the bumps that's uh, in the floor. But this floor is pretty much obviously it's a brand new house and I cleaned it, vacuumed it a couple of times. So the, the floor is pretty good. There's an occasional nail that sticks out, but I just take a hammer as you saw what I just showed you. And I pound that uh, nail that sticks out from the flooring in and then the problem is solved. So this floor, let me talk about it, is very, very simple to install. And I absolutely love this flooring. It is from Lowe's, but Home Depot also sells it, and Menards also sells it. So you can pretty much get vinyl flooring everywhere. And this one here is Tongue and Groove. I talked about in the first season in the episodes that there is another, uh, I'm, I'm about to turn the turbo on here in a second, because um, I don't want you to be here for the next couple of hours watching me. So basically this floor is, you can get it anywhere, and the tongue and groove is the one that I like. They do make it uh, where you have glue strips and you have to align those glue strips together and pretty much perfect. And I do not like that flooring. I actually refuse to, to be honest, even work with it if somebody wants me to install it. I just don't like dealing with it because uh, you pick it up once, you try to put it in there, you're off a little bit and then my OCD kicks in and I have to get it perfect. So I lift it up and put the glue strip on again and then the glue starts to lose its uh, intensity and it's just it just messes with me and I don't like that glue one. And see I use pretty much everything. This is the Home Depot paint steering stick and um, last time I used that for shims. Now I'm using it kind of as a ruler to cut uh, with basically um, straight lines and you can you saw me there uh, using the metal snips if I need to cut it. So un unconventional uses for different tools, and that's what I was talking about, how good tools can make your job easier in the previous episode. So metal snips and I cut flooring with it. So here, this, I don't know, it's three minutes into the video, but I don't know if it's 10, 15 minutes of me doing this. This goes together fairly quickly. Um, there is a special angle that you can kind of see me. I don't know what exactly that angle is there, but once you do this flooring a couple of times, you can kind of get an idea and a feel for it that everything snaps into place. And that's when I was cutting around the vent there. And it's, I don't know how to describe this, but whatever you work with, once you do it a couple of times, you get a pretty good feel how that material is. And same thing goes with tools. And see this here, I, I love doing this. I mean, if you can see here, I have a couple rows down already. If you're going to overlap the flooring right away, I would suggest at the minimum try to overlap it about eight inches so it doesn't come apart on you. And just go at it. If your floor is nice and smooth, if you got a new house, you can do it just like this. If you got some imperfections or if you have laminate and you want it to be a little bit more quiet, then put the underlayment. And underlayment is cheap. It's like 25 cents to 50 cents a square foot. So it's not much. And this flooring, the box, it's pretty heavy, so it's kind of deceiving because the it's very thin, the flooring, but it's it's dense. That that stuff is not uh, light. If you go to the store, pick up a box and see how, how heavy it is. And that's the other thing. If you want to learn how to do this or if you want to get comfortable with it, buy you one box of the flooring. It's uh, $2 a square foot. That's how much I paid for it. 
and it's about 26 or 27 square feet that comes in a box so you're basically spending about 50 60 bucks but you have an idea of how this stuff goes together and to see if you would like it and I'm telling you vinyl flooring it is freaking awesome I'm gonna talk about that in a second here with when the whiteboard comes around as I always do at the end of the episodes but I have it written down here it's easy to install it's warm on your feet so that's the other thing it's actually very cool to walk on and I do that all the time when once I'm done I take off the shoes and I just walk with my socks on the floor just to give it a test drive I guess and it just feels so cool on the feet it's completely different from like um, laminate flooring that I mentioned or from a uh, tile tile is cold on your feet so it's warm on the feet it's flexible as you can see so it's easy to work with easy to clean that's the other thing if you have a Swiffer you can just go with a Swiffer and you can clean your whole house you don't honestly even need a vacuum in here um, so easy to clean water resistant and might be even waterproof I don't know if they actually say it's waterproof but I left this stuff outside before just to test it and it didn't go bad nothing happened to it and if you leave wood outside or laminate outside and it rains or even the moisture from the air I'm telling you your laminate or wood floor would get literally ruined overnight but this stuff can sit outside and I didn't see any damage on it the other thing is that what I like is quiet so it's when you drop something on the floor or if you're walking on it you don't have any kind of weird squeaks so it's very quiet and it's not expensive you can get it from anywhere from two dollars like I did and it goes up they have ones that have the actual padding underneath if you want it to be even a little bit sturdier and better and have uh, even more quiet and it lasts a while if you know anything about vinyl um, there's a lot of homes because it was popular in the 70s so a lot of homes used it in the 70s and that stuff is still around after what is the 70s is it like 40 50 years oh that's the tools that i use that's actually the tools that you work on cars with and i use it for flooring that's when i get close to the wall over there that's how uh, i help it to get close to that drywall interesting <laughs> so I come up to the drywall with um, with the flooring and then drywall is half an inch so I have half an inch all around for expansion so that's the other thing even though this stuff doesn't expand too much it's not like the wood but it still can expand the contract as the, the um, temperature changes so I allow it um, half an inch all around after uh, around all the walls and that's what I do so here is I'm gonna show you how this room came out and then in a second I'm gonna show you how the whole house turned out so this is what you're looking at here it took me about um, between two to three hours so not bad I mean look at that the camera doesn't want to focus but it almost looks like wood It's the vent hole that you see for heating and air. I love how this turned out and I love the pattern. It almost looks like wood. If you if you don't know any better and you just look at it, it looks like a wood floor. But it's vinyl. It's like a rubber and plastic. If you're not familiar with rubber uh, vinyl, what, what that is material-wise. That's my little deck over there. 10 feet by 15 feet. Here's the vent again. They cut, they installed this thing a little bit crooked. I don't know if you can tell, but it's not, a, it's not the end of the world. Nobody's perfect. And see, I got it pretty much close to the drywall and allow a little bit of room for expansion under the drywall since the drywall does not go all the way down to the wall, I mean to the floor. And actually you don't want to do that. You always want to have your drywall to be above the flooring. So no condensation and moisture uh, gets sucked up. And here's just a little piece that I'm going to do. And then we're going to jump over to the when everything is done and finished. And I'll give you the whole tour. It's a simple. 
Look at that, no power tools, just a tape measure and a box cutter, a hammer and some miscellaneous tools. So you can install this yourself and you don't have to hire professionals. Every single one of you guys can do this. So like I said, I vacuumed this a couple of times and then I always swept anyway when I was doing it. So just ignore the footprints, I guess, on the floor, but it's a done deal. So this is how it came out. And see, that's the overlap. It's about, I forgot exactly how it is, but it's somewhere between 8 and 10 inches on that overlap. And that carries kind of a pattern throughout the whole house. That's the other thing I do. If you notice that pattern on the floor, I try to usually do that uniformly. So the pattern is the same on all sides. It's just my OCD, I guess. And it just looks better instead of it's all crazy scattered and messy looking. At least that's how I like it. Some people like it when it's all scattered. So it doesn't matter. As long as you like it, that's how you do it. See, that's uh, the vents that I'm pointing to. That's the trim that you saw in the previous episode. Still holding up. Looking beautiful. I love how that turned out. So each episode that we go forward from now on, you're going to see that's the heating and air. Um, the thermometer that's going to go on there. This place is going to look more and more like a cabin. So that's the tongue and groove. I have an episode about that if you're curious, the pricing and everything. And that's the little bedroom. So the cabin is 448 square feet, but I stuck in a bedroom and a bathroom, so it feels like a, like a tiny house. So it's not gimmicky. So it actually feels like a house. See? Easy, easy breezy. Just a lot of work on your knees. So you gotta learn how to do it or get you some pads or something so you don't mess up your knees what if you do it once or twice you don't have to even get that to be honest but if you do it for a living then obviously you, you do so you don't mess up your knees and see i use the the metal cutters to cut around the toilet that circle that you see so you get nice little clean cuts that's where the toilet's gonna be you can see the water pipe sticking out that's the vent for the bathroom well, not the vent, but the, well, I guess it is a vent. And my shower, that's all messy and housing all my crap in there right now. See? Nice little cabin. That's, this is why I love what I do. It's not too long ago, this was nothing but just dirt. And I got a little house on it right now. Now to the right, that's where the water heater is going to be, where the ladder is. And to the left, is stackable washer dryer. The hole in the wall that you see, that's going to be the, the vent for the dryer. And see, that's the Swiffer I was talking about, so that's what I clean with. And from time to time, I just come in here and just clean it and, and be done with it. No need for a vacuum, so you can live in a house without a vacuum. And see, that's a double window in the bedroom. I figured I'd put an extra window for a little bit extra light. So it feels a little bit bigger than it actually is. So there you go. 850 bucks. I returned one box because I allowed myself to, for any kind of mistakes or damaged um, planks, but everything was good. No damage. So I returned the box, saved the 50 bucks on it, and everything came out good. Took me about a day and a half to do. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care.